Hello there, big dogs, big units, and big humans all around the world. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too on Bushka. And I'm here to talk to you about the Strev K. And this is a crazy tank. I mean, this clip wasn't chosen by accident. If you would care to look, you can see me going absolutely crazy and getting to the hill on mines in a tier 10 heavy with 3,500 DPM and a very strong turret just after a Sheridan. And he quite rightly goes, bro, I'm out of here. I don't know what the hell that thing is, but I don't want no part of it. I'm going to show you a few of these clips. The thing is, this tank, it is very, very good at doing certain things, but the skill, the skill level on this thing is going to be quite high, the skill ceiling. And in fact, as a solo tank, it's not nearly as strong as it is in Platoon. And I, I mean, you can say that about pretty much any tank, but it's got a lot of really weird characteristics that don't lend it to solo play. Um, its turret is the turret of a Centurion 7 and ones. I'll show you the armor profile in just a second, but it does have excellent gun depression of nine degrees, and it does have incredible DPM of three and a half thousand, well, 3,419. And the gun, 0.321 dispersion on a tier 10 heavy, pretty handy, right? This is the armor profile. This is firing at it from a Type 71, the Japanese T10 Heavy. And you'll see when I put this thing up that the turret is very much the Sense 7 and ones turret. It is not actually that great. You've got to get it up. And even then, either side of the cheek, and there's a big coupler on it, Capola, that the Sense doesn't have to deal with. And the upper glacis pike nose, which is a cross of the Crane Vargan and the Sense 7 one is nice, but it's not Type 71 or Crane Vargan or mouse or E100 kind of armor. It's it's medium tank, strong, strong, strong medium tank armor, but not strong heavy tank armor. What its value is here, that is an IS-7. I'm playing with Mr. Ouija, and I am absolutely going hell for leather. And this is what it does really, really well. If you have a partner who is reliable, a platoon mate, you can stop other tanks on the red team from getting to their positions. And you can do it so effectively, like you saw in that first clip with the Sheridan, um, because what you do is you bottleneck people. I don't actually do massive damage here in this game. I think I did about two and a half K, but what I really did was move forward and everyone on the red team was like, well, are you gonna look after this guy? Or are you gonna look after this guy? And you'll see here again, uh, running it with an IS-7 is a dream it's an absolute dream because the is7 is one of the few heavy tanks that can keep up with it and then you get the rock okay so you are the spearhead you get yourself right out there i'm going to go the stairs here in town and i did this all the time in the strip k when i was playing it because what it does is again it stops people from effectively doing what they want to do when you get to this spot you create angles that they just can't help but pay attention to. You can shoot back across the cap. You can shoot anyone pushing up. It becomes very, very difficult for you to deal with this tank. In a solo capacity, that's not so much the case because you can push out there. You can get there quickly, but when you get there, you're on your own. This is a game from when I was on the EU server, actually, in Lithuania for the Blitz Ultimate Cup. Um, this is such a good tank. And I know people will carry on and say it's overpowered and all this kind of thing. And I'm not here to talk about snow globes and the chances of getting it and whether you want light crates or anything like that. What I'm here to talk about is the tank itself. So I will strongly recommend if you do get this tank that you play it in platoon with a big heavy. You can play it with a medium and it can get to the flank, but it's not where its highest and best use is. You want to play this as a gun depression heavy. You want to play this as a heavy that is getting angles. This is the tank you play with an IS-7 or a Type 71, and you play it with that tank to do the damage. This is the farm. This is the new age Chieftain Mark. Like, it is a Chieftain. Like, this guy does not know what he's letting himself in for when he clears out the back door here. The HE, however, is only 53 millimeters of pen, so it's not crazy good. Uh, I will point out that this is a 105 millimeter gun. And that's pretty pretty weird, hey, like a 105 millimeter gun on a tier 10 heavy, and it only has 350 alpha, 
which again is very, very weird. But the pen numbers of 259 and 310 for your APCR are pretty solid. And the turret, as you can see, is like that sent 7 and 1 turret. It's going to bounce situational rounds. But if you stick it up and hard peak with this turret, you're going to get wrecked. You're going to get rocked. And that's just a fact that you can't get past. The real value of this tank is this engine boost. The engine boost is spectacular. Having this engine boost means you can go from zero to hero very, very quickly and put yourself in positions the other tier 10 heavies just really can't get to. I mean, it's already a very nimble tank in and of itself. Um, its top speed is 47 kilometers an hour. But you'll get this up to the low 50s all the time off the uh, off the engine boost. It's pretty spectacular. And your traverse is 42.5 degrees, 42.35, right? Which is, again, a very, very good number for a tier 10 heavy. It's just a pain in the ass to deal with. And it's that typical tier 10 DPM heavy where even if you are able to pen it, it's three and a half thousand damage per minute. And it's got, well, I'm running it at the moment at times with the hit point buff and at times without the hit point buff. But all in all, you're still looking at a tank that has two and a half thousand hit points. That means that to burn through this thing, you are going to get punched in the face a lot. And it will be the king of trades, okay? Uh, the armor profile means that even in a medium tank or a light tank or a TD, you're going to have to pay attention and sometimes you're going to have to use premium ammunition. And that means that if you're using premium ammunition, then you are obviously not doing max DPM. So it's able to mitigate the DPM coming in and maximize its DPM going out. Because, you know, that gun depression, it's very, very easy to manufacture shots in this tank. Do I think it's OP? In good players' hands, this thing is going to be freakish. I don't know if it's a tournament tank. It doesn't have the armor profile that you want. Uh, tanks like the Concept 1B and that are great, but if it keeps this boost, wow. Like, there will be maps where this thing will break the meta. You saw being able to push that hard that I could get up to the... Uh, the hill on mines that quickly and I mean this is 0 0.321 dispersion and I'm just going turret ring on this E100 again and again and again and again and it's hitting them shots that's very very nice for a tier 10 heavy tank will I be endeavoring to get it well hell yes hell yes I want this on my normal account um, give me some snow globes baby just shy of 6k there in that little mastery um, and 1,530 damage blocked. Don't expect it to be blocking damage. Like I've, I know people are going to rant and scream about this thing having a really good turret, but it's not. And it's not trash either. Some people will go, there's a trash turret. Well, whatever. Try and look on the positives of life. You have a tank that can get 50 kilometers an hour, has 3.5k DPM, has 2,500 hit points, and 9 degrees of gun depression. If you can't turn that into a winning combo, then the problem is you, buddy, pal, Good amigo, chocolate soldier, my dirty scoundrel, you're the problem. If you can't make that a good tank, then ain't nothing helping you that's going to uh, actually help anybody. And this is the in-game kind of maneuverability that I'm talking about. You'll see how quickly we just start spitting out the damage here. It's something that happens very, very naturally. Mr. Weege's over there in the 57 Heavy. This isn't really the best kind of line up but we just got kind of tired we won a lot of games um but you'll see as we start rumbling here we're just spitting damage out so freaking quickly so quickly and then we're gonna relocate and watch this thing relocate this is what i love about this tank and this is what makes it this is absolutely what makes it it's like leopard one is only a leopard one because it can do 60 okay this thing is only ever going to be a Strep K because it's able to relocate so very, very quickly. Even when you're in situations like this where you're... Oh, thanks very much for that bollocks bounce. Where you, you know, you're expecting... You're on the flat. You're not pointing downhill. You're not... Oh, and the uh, camo, the elite camo. Here we go. Quick sticks. 
Watch this thing go. Oh my god. 51, 52. Look at how quickly we put 3.5k to bear. How fast did we get to the flank and that's 60 TP? And that's the game, right there. He was holding that angle. I couldn't cross because of the T110 E3. I bounce one shot from the E3 and then I am into the butt of this 60 TP. That's that's why it's so, so effective. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Remember to subscribe. Remember to like the videos. Remember to share the channel. I'm back, baby. You better believe it. I'm coming for your subscription. That's right. I want you and my team. I want you to be part of the Bushka crew. Um, look after yourself. Stay safe in the battlefield. And as always, uh, bye for now. Walk the dog. Eat your veggies. Be nice to your mum. Your dirty grubs.